Welcome back, guys. I'm Katie Wilson here with an incredible panel of people. How are you guys doing today? Great. I'm doing good. I am joined here by Kyle Stark. That's me. Teeny Howard. Hey. That's and you. Sarah Grayley. Hey. That's her. You guys are the incredible writers on the new Rick and Morty comic series. Give it up for them. Occasional artist. I don't want to brag. <laughs> yeah, both of them actually can draw and write. Uh, yeah. I do not. <laughs> We're what you would call multifaceted. Yeah. Mm. See, you guys are super talented because I can't write or draw or anything. So all of those talents I completely lack. <laughs> I, mean, I can't interview anybody. <laughs> I'm sure you could. I'm sure you I could. I can't. I'm terrible at he it. You can't. You don't. You don't want to no. let him yeah, talk knows, to people. You don't want I'm that. I'm bad. I'm like. I'm like his. Uh, like his PR guy. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the comics. How did you guys get started in this one uh, on the project, and uh, what has it been like working on it? Um, well, I was. Um, so when they started the Rick and Morty comic book series, which is from Oni Press, and it's very good. Uh, issue 35, I think, just came out. So we've been doing it for almost three years, literally. Uh, when I got asked to do it, it was originally going to be like a five-issue rotating cast thing. Um, I did such a good job, they asked for me to stay on another five issues, and then they asked for me just to stay on. <laughs> um, and I think because I stayed on, th this is my theory, it's not true, they're like, we should get some dope spinoffs so other people can get in, and I think that's how both Sarah and Teeny came along. That's my theory. Well, they may have a different version of that, which... Probably doesn't involve me. It can't yeah. be accurate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, Sarah and I both, well, Kyle writes the main series um, with occasional help from me. Uh, 3738, 37, coming out soon. 3738, let the Rick one in, the Rick and Morty Vampire Spectacular. That's very good. It's so good. Uh, um, Sarah, I wrote a spinoff called Rick and Morty Pocket Like You Stole It, which uh, is has come out all five issues. You can order the, the paperback now. And um, it was about the, the Pocket Morty's mobile game. So it was a, kind of a... All the sick jokes we all make about Pokemon, just make it happen in comic form. And it's the story of, uh, you know, the pocket, a pocket Morty that we follow who considers himself like a regular Morty um, and how he uh, frees or tries to free Rick's Mortys and to understand the whole pocket like you stole it. The whole pocket Morty's concept. And then Sarah <laughs> oh, wrote... And, and Mark Ellerby drew it, who's yes, now John. the new ongoing artist who was the backup artist. He's, he's very amazing, good. yeah. He's, he's the best Rick and Morty art boy. He's he's uh, he's also written some of the backups as well. He wrote all the back most of them. Yeah, and he's drawing... Yeah, and he's drawing the main series yeah, now. He's, he's very he good. Drew, he's a nice British boy. Yeah, he's drawing Let the Rick one in. And then there's Sarah, who wrote hey. her spin-off. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got asked to pitch a single, and then it turned into a five-issue miniseries, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's called Little Poopy Superstar, which is great because everyone has to say poopy when yeah. they want to order it and yeah. buy it. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, um, Never apologize. It yeah. was it was really cool when it came out, um, when I got asked to pitch for it, but there wasn't much source material on Mr. Poopy's, um, Mr. Poopy's butthole. So, that was kind of fun, but like, yeah, it was, it, I started working on it pretty early on in the show. Um, and it was pretty wild because I was like, oh, I get to do Rick and Morty? Okay, yeah, it's, it's a great show. All right, I'll, I'll get in, in on that. <laughs> Sarah's delightful, everybody. I don't know if you Aww. got that or not. Well, I got that for I sure. Um, so what is it like adapting a hit series like Rick and Morty? I always say comics? it's literally, like, literally we have to recreate two geniuses who get mm -hmm. 30 minutes into 18 pages every month. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the hardest things about it is that you know you think like oh Rick and Morty they they can do whatever they can do anything but but because of that because of the lack of physical consequences you have to actually create tension you have to create stuff for these characters to do you can't just have them like like fart on each other for eighteen pages Kyle uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen art is art everybody I don't know <laughs> but yeah so you know you, you, and at the same time you're trying to do things like you're trying to find new like pop culture things to touch on, to reference, you know, if you're referencing sci-fi or horror, or fantasy or nerd culture, or all the, the things that, that Rick and Morty reference. Um, and then at the same time, you know, occasionally you get to do something where that's just like the show. It's kind of shockingly touching. Um, I got the opportunity to write Rick and Morty number 33, which was uh, an issue about Summer thinking, considering her sexuality and thinking about it and kind of going through that thing where it's like, you know, for a lot of people, sexuality isn't a default. It's something we have to think about and consider. And in a world like Rick and Morty, you can make really, like, fun consequences for that. And for me, who was also, like, a, you know, young queer teenage girl, it was really fun to inject 
some humor that I think a lot of people might be afraid to tackle that topic with. People that hadn't lived that experience might treat it, you know, with a certain reverence, which is good and kind, but being someone who lived that experience, it was really fun to, like, lean into the Rick and Morty cynicism and, you know, have Rick's lesson be like, well, here's the thing, Summer, men and women are equally disappointing in romantic relationships. Like, 